Hey, Steve Bazek, Architect. Yeah, we're at our offsite build. I'm still standing in the same corner. Hopefully you checked out that whole wall R value video I did. But, you know, after talking to uh, the client who's playing cameraman for me, we were talking a little bit about thermal bridging. And I said, you know what? Let's talk a little bit about that in a video. So thermal bridging. If I understand how a wall works, meaning that heat moves from hot to cold. That's all it does. It never moves from cold to hot. People that say, oh, I'm insulating because I don't want to let my cold out, right? If you're down, say, in Austin, Texas, or Phoenix, people think, well, you insulate the wall because you want to keep the cold in. No, you're insulating to keep the heat from the outside from trying to come in, right? Temperatures are always trying to equalize across the spectrum, wherever I am, from hot to cold. So a colder surface, a colder area, the hotter area is losing some of its heat in the hope that we're equalizing and coming to some level of balance, right? So we build with wood studs typically. You know, here we have a 24 inch on center frame. A lot of framers will do those in 16 inches. The beauty of 24 inches are in four feet, we lose one stud, right? We gain that inch and a half that we can put towards insulation. Now, insulation is measured in R value. Those of you that aren't familiar with it, the R stands for resistance, resistance of heat flow. So you see where I'm going here, right? You have the basics moves from hot to cold, and then we have R value, which is resistance of heat flow. So I'm in a house here, it's February, climate zone five. I want it to be 70 degrees in here. It might be, let's say 30 degrees out there. So we have a 40 degree delta across that stud wall. Well, if I pack this with insulation, it's gonna be a, a good performer, really good performer, right? Insulation works. It's like putting a jacket on the house. But at the stud here, one of the problems is, is that while it's wood and it's a, let's say a very, very modest insulator at best, <clears throat> it offers, you know, a decent degree of conductivity or what we would term thermal bridging, right? So that the heat can move through this faster than it can move through the insulation, right? There's more resistance to that heat flow here than there is there. Now, if I took that wood stud and I replaced it with a metal stud, like a commercial building, that's like a super highway, right? That's like going from second gear to fifth gear in heat flow, right? So the metal stud would act as a, you know, uh, I've heard it called a thermodynamic nightmare, right? Which means basically it's a super highway for thermal bridging. So how do we battle that, right? You can see on the outside of the wall here, we're using zip R sheathing. And the R resistance means we have an inch and a half of polyiso cyanurate rigid insulation there, right? And that's where the R sheathing comes from. It's basically insulating sheathing. So now, not only do I have added resistance to heat flow here, where I already have a good wall, look what it does here, right? That R9 versus this stud at R6, that's one and a half times better insulating value in an inch and a half than the wood is at five and a half inches. And the problem with the wood is it's a much higher conductor of heat flow than the polyiso is. So this is a much more of a thermal bridge than that is. Like, you know, it's, it's one of those things where every material that exists has a level of R value. Um, some are better than others, obviously, glass not being good, concrete not being good, but everything also has a level of conductivity that's based on its density, its material makeup, how it's formed or made, et cetera. And, you know, wood is probably somewhere in the middle there where it's certainly not the best, but it's certainly not the worst as 
the example of the metal stud. But the way we compensate for that is by putting something like an insulating sheathing on the back side of that. So not our, only are we enhancing those R values, but we're providing what's called a thermal break to a pretty conductive thermal bridge. And if this was a metal stud, then this, you'd probably want this to be more like two or three inches of rigid insulation out there just to compensate for how great a thermal bridge is. And when I say how great a thermal bridge, I'm not talking about it's a good thing. It's how really good it is at being a bad thing, right? So thermal break, thermal bridge. I'm Steve Basic Architect. This is our off-site build. Until next time, long live our buildings.